In the past couple of videos, we learned how to add a cube into our scene by using the TraceJS component, as well as how we can transform the position, rotation, and scale. Then we learned how to animate the cube by using the use render loop available on the core package. But now it's time to use more than a cube. In this lesson, we will discover all the built-in geometries available on 3GS and why not create your own. But before we do that, subscribe, drop a like, because I'm watching you. Here we have the cube that we have been working on, right? So to show you how a geometry looks like, I'm going to add a property called wireframe or like a prop here on the mesh normal material. So you can see what a cube is in a geometry, okay? So now you can see all the lines that connect the different vertices of the geometry. It's pretty funny because we will expect to have like a square here, a square here, and that's it. But we actually see some triangles because all the geometries are uh, represented by triangles that connect between different vertices. In 3DS, a geometry is composed by vertices, which are just points in the 3D spaces or coordinates, okay? So I'm going to try to create like a cube by creating the vertices. Also, there is going to be a vertice uh, here, something like that, okay? Then we have the edges, which are lines that connect those vertices together. Notice that whenever we are joining two vertices, it's a straight line between them, but also here we are going to create a triangle. This triangle that we are creating, okay, Let's create one here for this part. Oops. It's really difficult to draw with the mouse, to be fair. And this one. And I think another one here. So look what a pretty cube, right? <laughs> now, but the idea that I want to take from here is that um, this part right here, okay? So the union of three vertices is what we call a surface or a face, okay? This is a face. There are some other software uh, that create quads, which are basically the same concept, okay? But creating uh, polygons instead of triangles. But in 3GS, everything will be resembled as a triangle. So if you go back to our geometry here in the scene, you can see that each face that before was a complete color is now represented by two triangles, okay? Each one of them. So before we would jump into the building geometries that 3GS offer, I just added a use to paint here and also a control for the wireframe prop. So whenever we toggle this, uh, we're going to see the, the solid version of the geometry and then uh, the wireframe mode, okay? This uh, will allow us to see better how the geometries look. So all the built-in geometries that we're going to see in this lesson and actually inheriting from a class called Buffer Geometry. So this is the one that provides all the methods and properties that we know. And then each uh, geometry might have their own uh, local properties, okay? So uh, we already play with the box geometry here. Let's create a sphere. So the sphere geometry works similar, okay? Here we have like um, a little bit of typing like uh, where it comes. So it's a sphere geometry and this one inherits from the buffer geometry as well, okay? So how do we know what things to pass? Here in the arcs, we can see um, what parameters can we pass to initialize the sphere. So the first thing is the radius. So let's create one, it needs to be an array. So um, one, then how many width segments and how many height segments. So this is important. Let's go here and put like 32 and 32 and let's save here. And now we have a different geometry. So let's uh, toggle the wireframe here. We can see a perfect sphere right here. And if we toggle again, we can see that this one as well is made of a lot of triangles, okay? So all the vertices of this geometry is connected by triangles. 
Um, we can modify here, for example, there are too many uh, triangles, let's say, okay? So if I reduce the number here, you're gonna see that the sphere is not in the same quality. It looks like a um, really low, low poli kind of thing, right? If we toggle the wireframe, we can see that now it's composed of less triangle and less vertices. This is an important concept because most of the time to optimize your uh, scenes, you want to reduce the amount of triangles that you need to compute. Of course, without affecting the visual quality. In this case, this sphere looks awful. It looks like a snowball, right? So you can go, for example, for 16, let's say. And it kind of looks a little bit better. Okay, so bear in mind that the more vertices you use, less performance is going to be. Let's see what other arguments there are. So there is something called the p, st p start and p length. So the p start is where um, the circle starts, so normally it's zero, but the p length is uh, basically like the whole turn. Okay, so if we use matpy uh, and instead of duplicated by two, which is the complete circle, let's do half of it and let's save. Now we are gonna see that we had a half of a geometry. Funny thing here is that um, in the normal, in the, in the materials, you can specify if the material can be seen from both sides. To reduce rendering, uh, normally the inside of the circle is not gonna be visible. So you only, and render the outside of it. Okay, so let's continue with another geometry. In this case, is the cone geometry. And let's say that we don't know, we didn't know that whenever you uh, add a new um, geometry here, you're gonna have the intelligence telling you the arguments that you need. So you come from 3GS, right? And you see this uh, docu in the documentation, you see the cone geometry, okay, which is this one. And then you see like how would you build it in normal or plain 3GS. So it's as easy as uh, checking, okay, the, the first three arguments is the radius, the height, and the radial segments, okay. What we're going to do is take the name of it, like cone geometry, here, and just prefix trace to it, and you automatically gonna have the geometry here. So going back to our browser here, um, we have radius, height, and then radial segments. Okay, so I think we can use only the first two, and it doesn't make sense to have more. And let's use, well, let's put 32. So now we have the cone render, perfect. And also the mesh normal material allows us to see like how the UV maps work. But that's something that we are going to learn in further lessons, okay? Uh, if I go here, you're going to see that it's quite different from the others because the triangles go from the top, okay? So there is one, only one vertice in the top and then you have a circle which is composed of different um, uh, vertices, okay? So the geometry is quite different from the other ones that we have seen. Okay, so the time has come to create the mighty of all the geometries that every 3D modeler or uh, 3D artist use and is the mighty Donut. Okay, so we're gonna learn the geometry that will allow you to create, of course, not something so realistic as this, it will require more, but at least the basic shape. So you pro my cat just enter the bathroom. Okay, back again. So um, you will probably imagine that if we do this and we add donut, we have our geometry, but the intelligence is failing because they're actually not donut geometry. It's called torus geometry. Why the f is Taurus, I don't know. If you know, drop it in the comments below because I have absolutely no idea. It should have been called Donut. So if we check the arguments that it requires, um, let's do this again, sorry. Um, 
we have the radius, the tube, which I think is like um, how thick will the donut will be. Then the radial segments and the tubular segment, which are uh, similar to when you uh, you add more to have more definition. Okay. So what we are going to do is use the um, values that uh, the compiler is giving me here. And now we can see like a really nice donut here. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. I love it. To finish all the built-in geometries, I'm gonna show you one that is one of my favorite, which is the torus knot geometry. So this one is different from the torus because it actually like messed up. And it, it looks like a knot, okay? So we check the arguments and this one has as well radius, tube, number, and tubular segments. So maybe we can use the previous one. And if we reload, we're going to see like a really weird um, looking thing. So I don't know if adding here things is smoothed out. Yes. So the more you add here, the more vertices, the smoother the transition is going to be. So it's going to look something like that. Uh, this is one of my favorite geometries ever. It looks amazing for um, tutorials and so on. So we might be using this one in the future, but look how complex it is inside. So all these vertices are connected again by triangles, but you see how many they are. If I put something like 10 here, um, you're gonna notice that now is like, it has less tubular segments, meaning that it's way more performant and it doesn't look that bad though. Okay, so the last section of this tutorial is a little bit more advanced because we are going to build our own geometry. So before we do that, let's see some concepts, right? So I'm going to basically create some vertices, okay? So here I'm going to create one at 0, 0, 0, which is the origin um, of the scene. Then I'm going to create another one on 0, because this is the y-axis, it's going to be 1 and 0. And then I'm going to create another one here in the 1, because it's the x-axis, 0, 0. Okay? And then we are going to connect these three. This one will require a little bit more code, so bear with me. It's actually simple. So I removed everything here, uh, so we can focus on the buffer geometry. So the way we will create our own geometry is here. We need to define where the vertices are going to be, right? So we draw this and we define that one of them needs to be in the center of the scene, another one in the one uh, at one in the uh, y axis, and another one in one on the x axis. Okay. So we need some word to store that. Um, in JavaScript, we have a native uh, type for arrays, which is the float32 array. So we're going to use that for holding all the positions of our new geometry. So in this case, we initialize by using the new float32 array, but these are not the vertices that I want. So the first vertice is going to be 0, 0, 0. So let's mark it here first vertices. Then we're going to have uh, the one with the one in the y-axis. So this one, I don't know why it's so difficult to say that in a phrase. So this one, okay. And the other one is in the x-axis. Okay, cool. So now we can go here and create a new mesh. So just below here, we're going to say press mesh. Inside of it, we are going to create a buffer geometry, okay, with a, ma uh, a basic material um, with a color red, okay? It's important that we put wireframe as true, because if not, we are not going to be able to see it. So in the trust buffer geometry, we are going to pass the position like this. So instead of having po a position like always, uh, we are going to pass positions array and then how many values uh, each vertice is defined with. So in this case, it's three values, okay? 
So if we click save and we reload, we're gonna now see that in the X axis, we have zero, zero, zero here. Actually, let me just add the access helper so it's easy to see. Access helper here, okay. Oh, maybe it's uh, on top of, of the other one. What if we, uh, let's remove it. Or put another size, like, I don't know if you can put arcs. Zero point like this. Okay, that's better. So in the X axis, we now have a edge that goes from zero, zero, zero into zero, one, zero, zero, and in the Y axis until zero, one, zero, just like we draw here. And that's how you can build a custom geometry. Of course, there is uh, way more content that we could take from this one. So if you're interested in knowing how to use the buffer geometry, especially for particles, let me know in the comments and I will do a not that basic tutorial about how to use the buffer geometry. And that's pretty much for today about geometries in 3 yes. So if you would like to continue watching the series, we are going to talk about in the next episode about materials. So to not miss any of the videos, please subscribe, drop a like, and I think there is a bell right here or right here. Just click it and you will be notified when a new video comes. I want to thank all the community for your nice words and feedback, as well as a contribution on the 3 yes ecosystem. See you in the next time. Happy coding.